Okay, so before I start this, I just want to preface that this isn't going to be a traditional essay video. This is more so going to be a discussion about the show and my headcanon surrounding it. Okay? Okay. The Adventure Begins is a 2015 Thomas movie that we've all seen and know is good. It needs no introduction, and it's probably the best Thomas movie ever made, which really at this point doesn't need to be said. But what exactly is The Adventure Begins? It's kind of an anomaly in Thomas media, as it isn't its own story, nor is it a story that hasn't been adapted for the screen before. Rather, it's a retelling of the first eight or so railway series stories in the CGI Thomas style formatted into a 40-minute movie, all of which were previously adapted in the first season of Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. The problem, or to be more precise, the dividing factor, was the fact that many of the events shown in The Adventure Begins contradicted previous episodes and continuity, such as James being in his black livery, Thomas coming to Sodor in his green livery, Thomas chasing after James prior to saving him, or Henry's shape, etc. Why is this a problem, you ask? Well, I'll get into that in a sec. Right now, I want to take a quick break and talk about Hero of the Rails. Hero of the Rails is a 2009 Thomas movie that made history as being the first CGI Thomas movie. It was okay in my opinion, definitely don't enjoy it as much as I did when I was younger, but you know, it's okay. The general consensus of this movie is that it's pretty good except for one glaring issue. Ask most fans about this movie and they will tell you their number one issue with it is how it apparently breaks the continuity of the show. The idea is that because the movie states that Hero was the first engine on the railway, it somehow breaks the overall continuity. The theory is also reinforced by the fact that this was the first CGI production, so the writers suggesting something that big right off the bat suggested that they wanted to stray away from the initial continuity. And it is in this way that I find The Adventure Begins and Hero of the Rails to be similar. They both seem to confirm the three timelines theory as I have dubbed it. What is this theory I hear you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you, so hang on. Okay, so basically, the three timelines theory, as I like to call it, is the idea held by the majority of Thomas fans that the Thomas and Friends franchise exists in three main timelines. The first timeline is the Railway Series timeline. This is the best timeline, in my opinion, and many other fans, too. It is by far the most detailed, the most consistent, and the easiest to follow. It's also very distinct, as it's its own thing, being its own series separate from the TV series entirely. The next timelines are the two that make up the TV series, the Model Series and CGI Series timelines. The Model Series, of course, is all of the Thomas and Friends seasons, seasons 1 to 12, that use physical model props as the medium for the show. While a very good timeline, it definitely is not as consistent as the Railway Series timeline, with way more inconsistencies and a world that, although very developed, just never hit the same highs in terms of the lore as the Railway Series timeline. And lastly, there is the CGI timeline. The CGI timeline consists of all the Thomas seasons, seasons 13 to 24, that use CGI as the medium for the show. The CGI timeline is definitely the most inconsistent and by far has the most continuity holes. Many of the events in the CGI timeline contradict what happened in earlier episodes. And once again, we find that both Hero of the Rails and The Adventure Begins are alike in this aspect. They both present ideas, storylines, and characters that break previous continuity and suggest that this isn't the same continuity as seasons 1 to 12. However, two separate timelines for the TV show just doesn't make sense to me, and I'll explain why now. Before I begin, I just want to say that I think the books and show very much are two different timelines. They are completely different entities, and trying to make them work in the same continuity is impossible. I do, however, believe that the show itself is one, count it, one timeline. Firstly, and this is more so just personal bias, it just makes more sense to me that way. The world feels bigger, the characters feel fuller, etc. Secondly, and this is where my inner lawyer is going to come in handy, a lot of the show's inconsistencies brought on by the CGI seasons can be explained very easily. For starters, The Adventure Begins. I think The Adventure Begins and the original first season of Thomas can exist in the same continuity if you view The Adventure Begins solely as a retelling and not 100% canon. If you watch the film with the mindset of whatever shakes the canon isn't canon, such as engine liveries, shapes, or general events, then it becomes a lot easier to hold as canon to a singular timeline. The opposite is also true in that things like the breakdown cranes, which I see the same way as Big Mickey, Henrietta, etc., in terms of their faces existing and not existing at certain points, and Glynn, which don't directly contradict anything we've already seen, can be accepted as canon because of said fact. Essentially, because it is a retelling, you can simply accept the things that don't contradict canon and disregard the ones that do. When it comes to Hero of the Rails, my reasoning for it being canon to the model series is far less intricate. It really just boils down to the fact that it was never, ever, ever said in the earlier seasons who the first engine on Sodor was. And it's not a situation like the Railway series, where a whole book explaining everything's backstory exists. It was never explicitly said who the first engine on the railway was. So Hero being the 
first doesn't really break the canon for me, nor do I understand why it would for anyone else. There are of course all kinds of other inconsistencies in CGI Thomas that break canon, locations, portrayals of characters, flashbacks, etc. But if I'm being honest, those are issues pertaining to every show. Every show at some point or another has had character inconsistencies or plot holes or contradicting information, therefore I think it's completely fair to give Thomas a pass in that regard. In conclusion, I think there definitely is a viable case for the three timelines theory. There definitely is a lot of evidence to support it. My headcanon is just kind of weird and doesn't conform with the norm. That's not to say that I think there is no merit to the three timelines theory, in fact it might be one of my favorite aspects of the fandom, discussing timelines, characters, and the whole shebang. At the end of the day though, whether you think there's one timeline, two, three, or seventeen, there is a lot of enjoyment to be had trying to piece it all together. I just hope you have less of a headache trying to figure it out than me. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. See ya!